The nutrient-rich, dark, cold waves of the Atlantic Ocean relentlessly shape the rugged desert landscape along the 1,500-kilometer coastline of Namibia, stretching from the Kunene River at the northern border with Angola to the Orange River on the border with South Africa. This entire coastal region is part of the Benguela Current Large Marine Ecosystem, or BCLME. Namibia's harsh desert environment is shaped by the upwelling effect of the cold Benguela current caused by the prevailing southwesterly winds. This plankton-rich current provides a valuable and much sought-after marine resource in the form of lionfish. Various sources of evidence suggest that this marine and coastal system and its lionfish resource is experiencing significant climate variability and environmental changes. Small-scale lionfish angling and coastal communities living in this region are considered particularly vulnerable to these climatic changes as they are directly dependent on natural resources for their basic food security and livelihoods. Furthermore, several existing social and economic pressures and risks related to small-scale fisheries are compounded by their location in coastal and ocean systems experiencing climate variability and climate change impacts. The BCC project, Enhancing Climate Change Resilience in the Benguela Current Fishery System, aims to assess vulnerability of small-scale fishing communities in Angola, Namibia and South Africa to the effects of climate change and based on that, support community-based adaptation projects. The small-scale fishers of, of Henties Bay um, face qu quite a few threats. There's some environmental threats that are difficult to really articulate because it's a very variable uh, environment, it's a very variable um, marine ecosystem here. Nevertheless, it's quite clear that the fishers, as they work along the coast and fish on a daily basis almost, are experiencing changes. The, the fish is so very few because uh, this time is uh, it's only the hardiness start to come. From December, January, February, the capergee was biting. But only to pass uh, two months, there's nothing fish. Henty's Bay is located on the west coast of Namibia, north of Swakopmund. It is a well-known recreational fishing town and has also become a popular coastal holiday and shore angling destination. Recreational angling is nationally important both in its use of marine resources and in attracting tourists to the area. However, Henty's Bay is also home to many small-scale fishers whose livelihood and income is solely dependent on the fishing sector. The recreational fishers target many of the same species that are caught and sold by the Hafa Line Fish Project, including cob or kabuyo, West Coast Stienbras or whitefish, Khalyun, and blacktail or dasi. The fishing is very important for the community of Hennis Bay. There's no job. People are going to go to the sea, uh, catch small fish, go and sell it for people who are not afforded to go to the sea. That was the effect of Hennis Bay. But we don't know what, uh, what now, what can we do now? Only Hanganeni is the one who having the right to, 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 to selling the fish. The Hanganeni Artisanal Fishery Association, HAFA, was set up by the Ministry of Fisheries with funding support to assist the small-scale fishers with employment and reduce unemployment in the area. Hanganeni Artisanal Fishing Association was established way back in 2003 to cater for the uh, small-scale fishing community in Hendis Bay and along the coastal towns of the country. The main purpose was to organize them to uh, benefit from the fishery and marine resources through uh, sustainable utilization of the resources, of course. Hanganani provides transport to the fishing, uh, fishermen and women almost on a daily basis. The prime activities that they are engaged in are catching fish and then bringing fish into the headquarters where we have got the processing facility and cooling facility where uh, their fish are being weighed, recorded, and they are being paid out on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. That's how they are actually promoting self-employment and wealth creation 
uh, to the marginalized uh, communities of the country. It has so far up to over 140 members registered just within Hendis Bay. Only Hanganen is having a light, having that permit to selling the fish. Even our people, the in location, they're supposed to come here, catch fish, bring here. Every Friday, you get your money to pay your house, to pay your bill. Current regulations stipulate that the line fish can only be sold to Hafa by registered Hafa members. Non-members and recreational anglers may only catch fish for their own consumption and the selling of their catch to anyone is illegal. To further protect this valuable marine resource, strict maximum and minimum size regulations and bag limits are enforced. All of the line fish species grow very slowly. They live very long and some are even more than 50 years old. Their habitat is limited to a relatively small area, usually close to shore at a depth of around 20 meters. Kabuyo or cob undertake seasonal spawning migrations and form spectacular dense schools on which the shore anglers prey, often in a frenzy. However, these migrating fish are all large mature spawning fish and if caught and not carefully released, this severely diminishes the survival rate and the sustainability of the species. A consideration of importance is that Stienbras or white fish changes its sex and all large-sized Stienbras are mature females. Protecting large-sized fish in Namibian waters is therefore a critical priority. There is a tremendous threat to their fishing operations as artisanal fishers from illegal catch. Illegal catch from non hafa members, illegal catch from recreationals, illegal catch from a number of different sources, potentially even some vessels out at sea. People are catching a lot of capejo, uh, which is supposed to raise the eggs, to drop the eggs to palkis. But people they catch is having the eggs. It means you lose the fish. It's why too much pain to me. They're different for the, uh, when I'm talking, the, the horse maclet. Horse maclet, uh, the value is, they would never come with the capuijo, stembra, hadion. Those fish, is, is, is a fresh fish. Mm. The value also for the fresh fish is very, very also, it's very expensive even. Potentially a couple of gaps in the supply chain that they could smoothen out very much from a quality control point of view, you know, making sure that only the freshest fish gets delivered straight away to, um, to the market. Fishers have a vested interest in Hafa as an association being able to effectively market their product. That's a tremendous strength of this organization. So they really would like to see improved efforts of marketing, trying to open up new markets looking at what is possible, potentially entering a high-end market, which I don't think they have enough exposure to at the moment. I think the technology that was developed um, in South Africa that we call Abalobi, which was developed with the small-scale fishers there, I think a, a version of that technology could definitely um, assist um, an organization like Hangeneni to, um, to connect more directly and in more real time with, with, with the market kind of tools that they worked with over the last two days will enable not only the fishers to record their catch and to prove provenance uh, and to build strong traceability, but also Hafa to effectively market the product, diversify their market, and get a much better return for the marine resources that these fishers have access to. In Abu Lobby, I say that was a very uh, a good concept, uh, if I can say that. You know, so to put us actually together, you know, with uh, fishermen, you know, regarding the fresh fish, and you know, with me as well. You know, my experience with them, it was very, very good. They were very fresh, you know, they've been delivered on time as well. So we ran a test, you know, to cook some of the fishes into that as well, and this fish was superb, and it was very good. And I think, you know, for others out there that are doing uh, this, I think they must keep up that consistency. It will help us and help them as well a lot, you know, to keep up the business between two of us and also others that can be afford to buy this fish. Hagdaneni uh, actually uh, is, is the answer to the, to the, to the um, uh, community that are living along the coastal towns to, to definitely 
uh, benefit from such resources. There's massive op opportunity here. I think Kangeneni, as a, as, a, as a governance structure representing small-scale fishers and having a sort of a, an ear from government, is a great opportunity to really secure livelihoods and build livelihoods in, in Hentis Bay and, and in other places. While environmental stresses clearly affect lionfish resources in Hentis Bay and elsewhere in Namibia, a dedicated shift in mindset regarding the economic value of this scarce resource may secure further opportunities for long-term sustainability. Namibia's lionfish should be valued, treated and marketed on the same economic level as rock lobster. The responsibility of HAFA towards obtaining this goal for the Hentis Bay community is crucial. With transparent governance structures in place, hygienic and reliable supply chains perfected, and a committed diversification of markets implemented, the HAFA model could in turn secure its position in the lionfish value chain and provide the Hentis Bay communities with sustainable fishing for a future.